Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Heimlich, DC, and I want to talk to you today about how we can change your life, help you eliminate the problems that you've been having. Over the years, brain-based therapy has created hundreds of different kinds of balance disorders. And today, what I'm going to talk to you about is how we can change your life and help you to eliminate the problems that you've been having. So let's talk a few moments about what the different kinds of balance disorders are. Well, there's a whole big laundry list of them, some of the more common ones. Uh, first one that everybody's heard about is vertigo. So we've got vertigo with spinning. We've got vertigo without spinning. Uh, we've got ataxia, which is like clumsiness. We've got disequilibrium, and that's where your balance is uh, literally off. You're walking down the hallway and you're bumping into things, and, and you're just not sure of yourself. And you might even have to uh, like grab a hold of the chairs for your balance. We've got what's called visual vertigo. Now, visual vertigo is like an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Uh, you know, Jimmy Stewart, you walk into an area and you see something that overwhelms your brain and you feel like you're moving. It feels like you're spinning. And that's a type of visual vertigo. We've also got a disease called Meniere's disease, which is a disease of the inner ear. And it can cause hearing loss. It can cause severe nausea, vomiting, and these people, they just have horrible balance. And we've got uh, the vague complaint of dizziness. A lot of people say uh, a dizzy when they don't really know what they need. They just, uh, they can't really describe it. They just know that they don't feel right. Now, and, and something that just feels off. Now, maybe like their vision is just a little blurry or uh, if they move their heads too quickly, it, it gets kind of blurry. It makes them feel bad and there's, and there's a whole laundry list of different types of balance disorders. And, and one of the most common ones is called benign proximal positional vertigo, which is a lot of words. But basically what it means is you've got some debris in your inner ear. So whenever you lay down, you turn over, after about 15 to 20 seconds, whoa, the room starts to spin. Now if we talk about vertigo specifically, there's two major types. There's called exocentric and egocentric. Egocentric means that you're the center. You feel like the world's turning around you. Exocentric means the center's somewhere out there and you're moving around it. Let me give you a couple examples of how this happens. Uh, let's see if this sounds familiar to you or something you've experienced. Uh, you lay down in bed at night and all of a sudden the world starts to spin. Or you jump up too fast in the morning, whoa, everything starts to spin on you. Or maybe you're just sweeping a sidewalk. Turn your head and it feels like you're going to fall down. You could fall down. Maybe you do fall down. You know, the fear of falling um, actually may be because you might fall. I mean, some people will just, uh, it just feels like they're just being pushed right over the edge of the sidewalk. And here's another way to remind you about vertigo. If you're in traffic and you're sitting next to another car and the car backs up a little bit, you grab onto your steering wheel because it feels like you've moved. You get a little nauseous inside and maybe a little sweaty palms. That's another kind. Um, Another one is that people can't read in the car. You know, telephone poles going by in your periphery makes them sick. That's also a type of vertigo. Uh, so those are the more common specific types of vertigo. Now, what usually happens to these people? Well, uh, now if you've been suffering from one of these things that we've been talking about, here's what normally happens. You go to your doctor. Actually, you probably go to several doctors, maybe three or four. Um, before someone finally gives you an idea of uh, actually what's happening. You probably have an MRI. Um, you may actually have more than one MRI, a couple MRIs. You may have a CAT scan. Uh, you may even have advanced testing where they put water into your ears. Um, and here's, here's what's really frustrating about that whole part is most of those tests come back normal. There's nothing there to explain why you're feeling the way that you feel. So then some people say, well, maybe you're just making it up or maybe you're just crazy or maybe you need antidepressants. People come to me and say, no one's listening to me. I'm telling them something's wrong, but they just can't find out what it is. Uh, so they think I'm making it up. Oh, I need to take antidepressants. That can be super frustrating because it leads you to suffer. You know what's even more frustrating? Even if you do find something abnormal in these tests, the treatment that it gives you often really doesn't work. And I think it's just sad, you know. Uh, um, now, one of the things that's, that's, that's common 
of his medication is meclizine. It's kind of sedative for your vestibular system of the inner ear. And that might work for a little bit, but for most people it just doesn't work. And um, there's some side effects with it too. Because um, the reason it doesn't work is because it's not treating the problem. And then you come see me because I got to tell you something. Here's the key to solving balance disorders. Balance disorders are simply not inner ear problems. That bears repeating. Balance problems and disorders are not simply an inner ear problem. Now what normally gives you good balance? Well, it gives you good balance and steadiness is a complex interaction between a couple of different systems in your body. You have your visual system, what your eyes see. You have your muscle and joint feedback system, you know, what your body is doing. Uh, your vestibular system, your inner ear, and what your head's doing. When all these symptoms are playing together nicely and communicating together, well, everybody's pulling their own weight. They calibrate, things match up, and everything makes sense. You got good balance, your vision's right, everything's steady. Now the next very important is the cerebellum. And what I'm about to share you is probably gonna really change the way you look at your balance disorder. The two, well, the biggest causes that I've seen in my experience uh, for the patients that we see in here, balance disorders, that we've just talked about, is a problem with the cerebellum or a problem with the cortex of the brain, not just the inner ear. The cerebellum and the cortex of the brain do incredibly important things. They're the processing stations for all the different sensory input. What happens is this is when one of these areas starts to weaken or deactivate or doesn't pull its own weight, everything gets thrown into chaos. The systems don't match up. And I'll give you an example. It, let's say that you um, have a balance disorder and it's because you got a muscle and joint feedback system and it's not sending an appropriate signal to the rest of the brain. So here's what happens. The other systems, they turn it up. They ramp up things. They become hyperactive substituting and compensating for what you're missing. Well, the problem is, is that what this gives you is the dizziness. You're standing there, someone moves in your peripheral vision, and you start to feel like you're moving. It's because your system is in conflict. It's a, it's a conflict of information. You've heard a conflict of interest. Uh, this is a conflict of information. One area says one thing, the other area says uh, something totally different. They just don't match up. And that's why you get the nausea. And if it's bad enough, um, you can start sweating. You kind of feel uh, like you're going to pass out. Um, you may get a bad headache. It's because the system is not in balance. And they're in conflict. So the two single causes, the biggest cause that we find, are a problem with the uh, cerebellum and also the cortex. So how are we going to find that out? How are we going to assess you and find out where the problem is? Well, as you can already tell, we approach this quite differently than most anyone else that you've probably been to or what you're even familiar with. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do a thorough neurological examination on you. We're going to look at the cerebellum. We're going to look at your cortex. We're going to look at your vestibular system. We're going to look at your visual system, your muscles, your joint feedback system. We're going to triangulate that problem so that we don't waste our time thinking that's just an inner ear problem. I mean, we want to get all those pieces of the puzzle together and put them together. Okay? Now, what we use is a lot of different diagnostic tools in here. And it gives us a chance to really figure out what's going on with you. Okay? Um, we're going to find out which of these areas we talked about isn't working right. We're going to zero in on that. Okay? Like laser specificity. And next we have to do is get rid of it, right? So what we're actually going to do, we're going to treat this thing. First we find out what's wrong, and then we treat it. We can use calorics, we can use unilateral adjusting, we can use cerebellar feedback exercise, complex nonlinear movements uh, for the cerebellum, we can use saccades, uh, pursuit, smooth pursuit exercises, uh, vestibular rehabilitation exercises, core exercise, and a bunch of other things that you've probably never heard of before. And what we do is those in a specific fashion based on what you have. And the reason we use them is because they work. Over the last years, I've used things that I've just talked about and able to solve a myriad of different types of balance disorders.
from Meniere's disease, ataxia, vertigo with spinning, without spinning, uh, vertigo with blurred vision, you name it. A lot of things I don't even know the name of them because we treat the person, not the diagnosis. That's why we're able to help them out. And I want to tell you something. I don't, I don't care what anyone's told you. I don't care what other doctors have told you about your health. I don't care what your diagnosis you've been given. I want to help you. I don't treat your diagnosis, I treat you. So what you need to do is find someone who understands this information. You need to find someone who understands balance disorders are not just simply an inner ear problem. You've got to find someone that can assess you neurologically as well as your cerebellum, your vestibular system, the visual, all we talked about. Find out where things have gone wrong. I don't want you suffering. There's really no need for you to do that. I want you to go out there, find someone who understands this information and get your life back. So you can start enjoying things that you haven't been able to enjoy. Because I want you to feel good. I mean, feeling good is what life's about, right? Thank you very much.